All right, guys, down there is a culvert. Hard to see, but it's one of those that's up a ways, you know, off the off the ground, so nothing can really cross through it, so everything's got to go over. Uh, there's a little trail right here. You can see it's really thin, so we stuck a 220 in there, and, of course, we got a possum. But on this other side here, there's a little bit bigger trail that goes around, and... Uh, We've got a one and a half sitting on it. It hasn't caught yet, but I'm fairly confident it'll catch here in the next few days. So, but let's get this possum out. That's what we caught. Guys, if you don't think there's something with the weather system and how these animals travel, you're you're crazy. Because uh, I've had days like this where I just catch possum and skunks. I've caught one coon and like five or six possums today, right? And I have a feeling, with it being cloudy and windy, that the bobcats and coyotes will move good tonight. Uh, in my experience, every night it's been cloudy uh, this winter, I thought, well, I'm going to catch a bobcat the next day. And so far, it's happened. Uh, we're tagged out, so i got to keep releasing them, so that's no fun. But anyways, just wanted to point out, I mean, this is like the fifth or sixth possum tonight, right? And we're not catching anything else, hardly. One raccoon probably close to his den so that just goes to show you there's a there's always something we don't understand with these animals but i'll tell you I, i've i don't have their weather patterns figured out but i i've honed in on some things that have helped me this season so just keep that in mind another possum well guys just got off work this is the uh second trap we're checking today got a raccoon he uh pulled the stakes and Got a little ways away from where he was, so. But anyways, first catch of the day. His bucket sets are producing pretty well. All right, guys, and here's the second catch. Just uh, another raccoon in a blind set. He's hunkered up, so you can't see him very well. He was sleeping, so. It's raccoon number two tonight. We'll see if we get anything else. And here's raccoon number three today, also in a blind set. You can't tell now, but there's a very subtle trail right there. You can kind of see it. And there's a brush pile back there. You can't see it very well, but it's there. Anyways, this would be a good cutoff spot to avoid the brush down this way for any coyote. I was setting this with coyote in mind, but, you know, raccoons obviously always a possibility here but be a good bobcat or coyote spot but we got a coon tonight let's get this guy dispatched it's number three tonight i don't know if you guys can see it but that white spot there those white stripes that's a skunk whenever you're walking down there underneath the bridge make sure you're not talking on the phone i almost walked right into that Anyways, got a skunk, so we'll get over there and get that taken care of. Alright, guys, you can tell this skunk's on high alert. I'm guessing it's because he's in a drag and he's wrapped up. Beautiful colors on this skunk. We're about uh, eh, five feet from him. So, anyways, I'm going to kind of work my angle and see if I can't uh, eventually get a shot. So the key is here guys, stay calm, quiet, talk to the skunk a little bit, you know, don't do anything too fast. And uh, make sure you're not directly at its back end like he's turning us towards. So I'm going to reposition again. I don't like being right in, right in the fire zone. You can see we're there right now. Alright guys, first uh, stop of the day. Got a raccoon. As you can tell, it's raining down pretty hard, so let's get this one taken care of. Alright guys, second catch of the day. And that 160 box has just been slaying for this season for me. I think it's just because of that, you know, that dry pad there. 
anything that crosses there is uh, walking that. They smell that up there, go up there. And there's always been a decent trail up that way. So anyways, raccoon number two today. And here's a quick closer view on that. All right guys, got coyote number 26 on this rainy afternoon. Snared, just been hanging out here. So we'll uh, get this taken care of. For 26. So, guys, that's raccoon number three. One coyote today, just on a crossover uh, through the ditch, heading over a culvert. Uh, so, three coon and one coyote so far. It's a nice one. Let's get them dispatched. All right, guys, so the water levels went up. We got a bunch of snow slash sleet slash rain. Anyways, I had a set here. Actually, it's right there. It's a chunk of fish in half a water bottle buried underneath the dirt there. And, uh, and then I just buried a foothold in front of it on a drag. And we got a nice raccoon here. Just playing with different sets this season. I mean, I know a lot of guys have done those, but I, you know, I hadn't trapped a lot in the water. Um, just, you know, some beaver trapping, but uh, anyways, just trying different sets, and we got a nice coon. So, first one today. Well, raccoon num uh, number two today. He messed up my trail. You guys should see him here. It's a small one. He came through that little trail. I had a 220 in the shorts. I put a video up of that. But we got a coon there. So let's get him out. Well, guys, this is one of those trails that could take anything. You see, it's off the edge of a fence line, and the deer aren't crossing there. See those branches there? No deer have crossed here. There's no tracks up here on the road. Just a really good spot for anything. But, you know, I slacked off a good portion of the season. I shouldn't have, but I did. We still managed rolling coon number 200 today. Feel pretty good about that. Um, had a lot of health issues this year, and weather's been crazy. Been a good year to trap coon, though. Um, so that's raccoon number 200. Big boar. Decent mud on him. <laughs> and so, anyways, pretty happy. Raccoon number 200 in the truck. Appreciate you guys supporting and follow along with me. Well, here's that trail we caught one yesterday, and here's raccoon number 201. Uh, somebody dispatched this one for me, I noticed, so. Well, at least it's taken care of. Good catch. Coons dispatched. 201. Well, guys, there's raccoon number 202. Pulled my bucket in. Better get down there and get him out. He's DOA. Well, guys, first catch of the day, as you see, just another possum. You know, I get thinking about it. I've caught about 100 possums. We're coming up on around 100 this season. We caught 150 last season. Actually, over 150. I stopped counting at 150 last season. So, imagine... This is just some of the ditches in my area, right? This ain't even, you know, think of all the ground in between the ditches. Imagine how many possums there are that I catch that many. So I make a dent in the population, which probably helps, but I just can't imagine how many possums are actually per square mile around here. So anyways, just some food for thought. Uh, another way tra us trappers help out. Well, you guys might remember this location. Just yesterday, we rolled in a raccoon here. This is raccoon number 203, and a good size one in a blind set. He's chewing on sticks down there, so we'll get down there and get him taken care of. Yeah, we're here, bud. Don't worry. So, anyways, let's get this one taken care of and keep rolling. All right, guys, uh, got another raccoon at this location. Dead in his tracks. Uh, don't let the video fool you. We are at the legal distance from the fence as required at this location. Got a measuring stick checked out. But uh, anyways, got a nice coon here. 220. Let's keep rolling. 
Well, guys, we missed a coyote here the other day, or we caught a coyote here the other day, but we missed one last night. You see that coyote hair stuck in there? What happened, this Bridger 165, we went sleet, snow, melt, sleet, snow, melt. So what happened, even though it's just a blind set and it's not freeze-proof by any means, but it, it works pretty well most of the time, but it, this did freeze down. It snapped up. We had our coyote. You see the fur there. Unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, it didn't hold on to him, so he got away. But we'll we'll reset this, and hopefully, it don't uh, do the same crap it's been doing. You know, the crap we don't talk about is trappers. You know, going into the season, I thought I had my crap together, but these hand cooked tires are uh, four ply. They're almost brand new, so I thought, oh, I'm fine. All right? I got my crap together. We're fine. No. No, I I repaired both these tires a total of four times, which thank God my local tire shop doesn't charge an arm and a leg, so that's 80 bucks, right? Over 80. Okay. Ran my shell, myself out of double ferrules this season, just now actually, so can't make any more anchors. Ran myself out of cable early on. So, just go show you. Think you got your crap together one season. Trapping's expensive. It's always something. It's always something. But we love being out here, don't we? Damn it anyway. So anyways, guys, to combat that bull crap, next year I'm putting eight ply tires on the small truck before season. Brand new set of eight ply tires. And on the big truck, it's already got a set of 10 ply on the back we're going to put 10 ply on the front so our tire situation will be better our heavy equipment situation is good i got two of everything you know setters uh, i'm talking for cono bears all that crap axes all that two or three of everything um and then i'm going to make a list and every time i run out of something while i'm down there you know skinning or whatever i'm going to write that list and then each year I'm going to just order that shit and the basics for the following year. Hopefully, that cuts that crap of running down and doing stupid stuff at a minimum, but we'll see. Just when you think you have things figured out. So right here is where I caught that skunk the other night. And there was a railroad plate that I cabled off to underneath this bridge. Right. So caught something here, skunk the other day. Came down here this morning was all just a disaster of a mess that wasn't here yesterday so i got to looking down this trail follow me here and bear with me i got a duck i'm fat and there's no fresh tracks i already walked this and you see my boot tracks now but last night it was colder and i looked for tracks all the way down there's no tracks but something drug that plate and there's a squirrel foot left in there. Pick that up like it was nothing. I think that thing weighs 20 pounds and carried that right to that spot. I haven't touched it, didn't do anything to it. And I can't see the tracks because it was too cold last night. Didn't leave tracks. That's what I was looking for. And boom, something ate our squirrel. Had to be big, so anyways, we'll hey, get this reset up. All right, guys, so this is going to be the end of this video, but this is the place we're setting up tomorrow, starting tomorrow. This is going to be the next video. Uh, the landowner just got gave me permission to get in here. Uh, deer season's over and all that. So said there's some water in here. Not surprised. Said I can trap anything. So... Heck of a spot, some real nice marsh. So we'll get this set up tomorrow. Wanted to scout it today and get stuff ready because it's a pretty good spot. Most of the ice is melted, you can see. Uh, well, about, I don't know, almost half of it's melted, I should say. But uh, anyways, this will be where we set up tomorrow. Next video, appreciate you all. Stay tuned.
side. 